Greetings everyone, DFG here, Gideon's Flight. Hey guys, I uh, just want to take a little time and share some things with you that, uh, that's been on my mind over the last 24, 48 hours. So if you're following this channel, you know, that happens uh, quite often. You know, uh, I smile, but I only smile in terms of just, um, I guess, the, the I guess I kind of see it ironic sometimes that you know, with all the things that many of us have going on in our lives that, you know, there's still time to take time to talk about, you know, global events, world events, uh, 2020, you know, events, uh, the events that, you know, should open our eyes, but yet events that, you know, we can have the eyes to see, but not actually seeing, you know, what's true versus what is what gives the appearance of being true. Sort of like these roses right here. You know what I'm saying? If you're wondering, you know, DFG, why you have roses in your in your video? Well, to me, instead of going around and, and acting as though the world is all rosy and everything is just perfect and fine, you know, I, I decided to take, or I choose to take a different approach. So I'll just buy me some roses, and that's the rosiness that I need. I don't need the, 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 the deception of things are rosy around the world to make me feel better uh, about, you know, life uh, or about what's happening. Uh, to get back to some sense of normalcy, you know, you know, the whole rosy, everything is rosy, everything's going to be rosy uh, concept, you know, uh, can lead us down a very, very dangerous path because we don't or we haven't taken the time to be prepared for what is to come. And that's what this message is centered about uh, this morning. You know, what is going to come and are your eyes open? You know, 2020 it's an interesting year. I mean, we've seen things happen this year that we would have never, ever imagined. And I don't care if you're 20 or if you're 60 or 70 or 80. Think about it. Could you ever imagine the things that we've seen in 2020? How ironic that is 2020 vision, right? 2020, open your eyes. And yet we're seeing things with our own eyes that we could have, again, never imagined that would happen. And all of us are challenged right now in, in trying to figure out what's real and what's not real. And you hear me talk about, you know, this whole situation with the coronavirus. You know, many people believe that this is a planned pandemic, that that is not an actual pandemic that that kind of came on the scene on its own, but that it was brought, you know, for, to the forefront of the globe. It was it was intentionally placed here as a distraction, something to, again, to push forward an agenda that through 2020 hindsight, you know, none of us may be able to see the day, but tomorrow may all be victimized by it. The same thing with wearing of the mask. And I know that's a very sensitive subject for a lot of people. It's a very sensitive subject for me because that's, after all, I'm in the same world that you're in. I'm, I'm under the stress and pressure that many like myself who have to deal with people who are rejecting us because they feel like we're the, we're going to be the cause of a, of a major pandemic in the fall. You know, and, and, and so many people say, well, you know, why don't you guys wear the mask? Go along with it. And, you know, and some of us are saying, well, it's not. We don't have a problem with the mask. I don't. You know, well, this is like I have a problem with the mask. These are masks. All right. I own. OK, it's not a problem with the mask. It's a problem with wearing of a mask by force, number one, and problem wearing a mask by, you know, secondly, that it hasn't been proven that it can save us. And then number three. You know, the, the fact that what could be the ultimate consequence to the body of wearing a mask, especially for people who have to wear these things, you know, 10 hours a day, 8 hours a day, 40 hours a week. You know, what could that have? What kind of impact could that have on their bodies? And so to me, that's just an intelligent conversation. People of intelligence always understand that you have to hear both sides of the argument. If you, if you feel like the mask is the right thing to do, that's okay. That's that's your opinion. You're entitled to that. If you want to wear it, surely you should. But at the same time, you know, you you know, intelligent people would at least respect the right for one to debate it. Why not? Maybe there's something that you're not thinking about. And on the other side, maybe it's something that we're not thinking about. And I'm sure we both could give you a very uh, persuasive, persuasive argument on why we think it's important to wear it or why we don't think it's important to wear it. But at the end of the day, you know, someone is going to be right and someone is going to be wrong. I, my prayer is just that, you know, which 
that we land on the right side of this argument. Again, I'm not against you if you wear a mask. I, please understand that. I just don't want you feeling, I just don't want to feel that you can infringe upon my right not to. That's all I'm saying. And whether you agree with that or not, that's, that's okay. It's okay for you not to agree with it, but it's not okay for you to make me a, feel a prisoner on this planet, a prisoner in my own country, a prisoner in, you know, in my own city, my own community. That if I don't wear the mask somehow or another, you know, I'm, I'm the cause of, 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 you know, your perceived, you know, problem of what is to come. And not consider that maybe all of this stuff, guys, is already pre-planned. Maybe there's another agenda going on to, to, to keep us distracted while that agenda is being, is, is being implemented right under our noses. And we know the tracking systems. We've been hearing about these things for a long time. You know, we've heard, many of us heard about New World Order. You know, we've heard presidents talk about that. You know, coming up with things that they could take away all of our civil, our civil liberties so that they can keep us from rebelling against anything that they may have in plan, may have planned, pre-planned. You know, we talk about, the, you know, vaccinations. You know, you know, why is it so important all of a sudden that the whole planet gets a vaccine? And in particular, as a Hebrew, why is it more so important that I and my people are one of the first to be, you know, have this vaccine implemented? And then, you know, and when we speak out about it, you know, people are looking at us like, no, be quiet. You just need to follow along. Well, we've followed along before. We've conformed before as a people in America. We remember things like the syphilis, you know, Tuskegee, you know, experiment. We, we remember things like the smallpox that was placed in blankets, you know, to kill off many of our ancestors. We, 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 we are familiar with. You know, the many forms of, of, of disease and experiments that have happened, you know, to our people in particular. And then the broader community, secondly, after they tested on us. So why should we not be concerned in terms of, you know, you want to vaccine us before you vaccine anyone else? And then you threaten us that if we don't allow you to vaccine us, that somehow or another, you know, you're going to uh, restrain us into our properties. And that even in our properties, you know, you're going to bring the federal government the military to our doorsteps and, and evaluate what's going on in our homes and then snatch us out of these homes if we're not in compliance to what you think is the right thing for us, as though we have not seen this before in our history. You know, there's a saying that those that forget the past are doomed to repeat it. You know, I'm not one to forget the past and I'm not one to conform to anything that I, through my own research, that I've taken the time to, 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 to uh, get information about so that I don't bring about irresponsible statements. To take the wrong stand. As I stand again, <laughs> you know, be careful where you stand. You know, be careful where you take a stand to be sure that it is the right stand that you're taking. And again, intelligent people want to hear both sides of any argument. And then they ought to be asking the other questions. You know, why would this, this world, why would the globe, why would these nations around the world shut down the whole globe, you know, under the guise of uh, epidemic, when they've had many epidemics throughout the history, you know, of the world, and they never shut down the entire planet like they did in 2020. This is the time, you know, this, you know, open up our eyes. We should open our eyes. And this platform is for that very purpose is to challenge you to open your eyes, just to think, not to agree, but to think critically. And if I'm able to do that, then I'm successful in this. You know, like many of you guys, I have a full-time job. I'm working every day, long hours I might have. Full, my attention is, is, is in what I do for a living. It takes all of my attention to, to, to do that job successfully. But at the same time, I am a citizen of the world. I am someone who loves mankind, at least the civilized ones amongst us, mankind. And I'm surely pro my people. I'm surely pro the people of Yahweh, the, twi the tribes. And I know that we've been under attack forever. Since the beginning of time, our people have been, you know, the target of hatred, bigotry, ignorance, you know, uh, poverty, Debt, early death, diseases, epidemics. 
And if you're a Hebrew Israelite, <laughs> surely you should be concerned as I am about what is all this going to lead to. Why, you know, are we so consumed today in something as basic as should we wear a mask or not wear a mask under the, the, the pretense, again, taking my liberty to have my personal opinion, the pretense, you know, uh, that, that somehow or another, you know, the second um, coming of Corona is going to be the worst of all worst. They were saying this before anybody had mask on. And again, you heard me again. And this message is not about the mask. It just the mask just ties in to uh, to me challenging you is that being used as a diversion to keep us off of what's really keep us from thinking about the things we should we surely should be thinking about preparation for a crisis, preparation for World War Three, preparation for hunger when it hits the land, preparation for for debt and mayhem when it's sure to come, for war, for violence in the streets. I mean, after all, think about it. You know, we're talking about, we have people literally talking about defunding the police. And trust me, I am viciously opposed to the violence that many racist pigs, and all policemen are not pigs. I'm talking about the racist ones. They're pigs. I am, I'm violently against them. And if I had the power to eliminate them, to eradicate them from the planet, I would. So this is not a pro-police statement. It's not an anti-police statement. It is a statement that you remove the police, then what do you open the door for? Someone's going to have to govern. And please, let's not think that the people will govern themselves. I mean, they, they can, but it's not going to be a, a government that you're accustomed, accustomed to. I mean, the people will govern themselves doing slavery, guys. Don't forget that. That, that was a government system when they were hanging, burning, enslaving, raping. That was a governmental system. That was legal. That was the law. That was pre-approved. That was a nation that supported it. That The whole nation stood pro-slavery for a long time. Every state in the United States in the 17, late 1700s were slave states. New York, Mass, all of them were. Don't at least, at least, at least we not forget that. So often, you know, because of craftiness and cunningness they give us the impression well, it was just the southern states that were that enslaved our people that's a lie places like rhode island boston those were some of the first slave states in america the the, the original colonies all of them were slave states in case you didn't know that but you would never think that today the way they tried to ostracize the south you know as just you know you know, the, the, the enslavers of, of, of our people. But yet you see what's going on in Minneapolis. You see what's going on in, you know, uh, Missouri. You see what's going on in Chicago. You see what's going on in New York. You know, people can't walk in the park without saying, leash your dog. And all of a sudden, someone's talking about calling the police on them so that they could be killed. You see what's going on in Philadelphia, shooting young men in the back, running away. Now, that sounds like you know, so-called pro, you know, or anti-slavery mentality. No, the hatred for our people is all over this country. It has always been. The reason why, <laughs> I'm going to get off of this in a minute. The reason why Reconstruction was ended in the South, it only lasted about 12 years. Reconstruction was when we had black governors, mayors, etc., so-called black governors, mayors, you know, Congress people down South. And when the North had their soldiers after the Civil War, they came here to ensure that we weren't re-enslaved as a people. That lasted 12 years. And then in a backroom deal between the North and the South, they removed the, the, the Northern troops from down South. And then they allowed the racist bigots to come right back in and come up with vagrancy laws. You don't have a job, you go to prison. Back to the plantation, by the way, that you were on. But not having a job if you were a black man. This doesn't apply to white men, only black men. If you were a black man, and you didn't have a job, that was an automatic jail sentence. And you were sent right back to the same plantations that you were liberated from. And most of the time you were not paid and you were treated like a, not even like an animal, you were treated like a, a cockroach. A cockroach or, or a rat. And even a rat probably had more privileges because they could eat on their own. You could not. 
and you were left there to work be worked to death this is a fact this is not speculation go back and look it up go back and look up vagrancy laws all right and how they were implemented and who they were implemented against and that was the north in 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 in, in, in partnership with the south that opened that door for those things to happen jim crow laws segregation laws black codes there was cooperation through this whole country and now again we're being targeted as the number one carriers of coronavirus targeted i might add a targeted group again and so when you hear me speak out against you know wearing masks and being asymptomatic and things like that trust me my friend it's through deep heartfelt concern that i express my opinion about it and it's an educated opinion it's not you know here listen go and listen to the news and run back and telling you something you know uh mocking um, uh, or or you know regurgitating something that someone else said you know, it's through my own research, and I use biblical history, our history as a people, and I use resource. You know, the, the biggest you know, a weapon of information, and I do call it a weapon of information that we have, is the Internet. You can learn and find out just a little bit about anything if you're willing to, to go beyond the first page or second page of what you see. And there are other resources that are available to you to get knowledge, to get information, to challenge the narrative. Especially if you're going to be the victim of the agenda to eliminate, to depopulate. For whatever reason, and we know it's wicked and it's evil. We have always been the target of hatred and bigotry on this land. And so now, you know, for us to be able to survive this, this chaos, this mayhem, we have to think, you know, individually. We have to become collect, uh, collectively intelligent. If I can make up, <laughs> you know, two, put two words together and come up with my own definition. Collectively intelligent. In other words, we have to see ourselves as a separate group when it comes down to thinking critically about things that can be harmful for us. Especially when we've been made the face of the harm to the country. That means the whole country has an opportunity now to look at us. As the problem again and if we go along with that we are only guys again opening the door to our own demise and how is that wise how is it wise it isn't wise so I'll circle back to where I began you know 2020 this is the year to open your eyes or this is the year to create mayhem in plain sight and you don't even know it's happening this is the year to open the door to a world that you could have never imagined as has been the first six months of 2020. So let's get farther into this. And then I'm going to wrap it up with some things you need to be thinking about and you should be implementing in your households. First, TAS. Have any of you guys heard of the TAS News Agency? The TAS. T-A-S-S. -S, TAS News Agency. I suspect most of you guys are going to say, no, I never heard of that. And my question again would be, well, it's interesting because it is the, the number one news agency in Russia. One of the largest news agency in the world. I did say in the entire world. And that's important because there's domestic news and there's international news. And anything internationally that happens, it's going to affect us domestically, guys. We are in a global economy. How many times have you heard people say that? And you ought to know that by now. Most of the good supplies that we depend on every day for survival come from other countries around the world. You're in a global society whether you want to be blinded 2022 or not. It is what it is. You know, the task news agency is reporting on all kinds of things that we're not hearing about. I suspect we're not hearing about it because we're distracted. We're distracted by looking at each other funny because we have masks on our face or don't have masks on our face. We're distracted by, you know, because they're telling us to go protest in the street around things that have been going on forever. As though protest is the answer to the problems of racial discrimination in America. If a protest could end discrimination, it would have ended 100 plus years ago, guys. Protesting, again, is just a distraction. It's another form to get your mind off of what's really going on, to give you the impression that some change is about to come. 
And in all actuality, there's no change that's going to come with racial discrimination because that change has to happen in the heart of a man, not in the protesting. And even some of these whites who decide to get out there and protest with you, at the end of the day, they're going back home to an environment where no one is discriminating against them. So they have really nothing to lose. Yeah, you have everything to lose in these protests because it kind of pacifies you. It kind of, it's like Novocaine. You know, you, you know it, instead of fixing, you know, the, the, the ache, it just kind of numbs the pain. That's what protesting means to me. It just numbs the pain. Let's go have a protest because they killed another one of our brothers or sisters. And then, you know, after the protest, you know, you know, that Novocaine, you know, it kind of makes you feel good, you know, for a moment. At least it eases the pain for the moment, numbs things. And then when that when that Novocaine wears off or when that protest is over with, guess what? They go right back to killing us, as you saw in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. The shooting down of the brother running away from the police officers and many other incidents between then and now. So that's not the answer. It's just another form of distraction to keep us from thinking about the things that are really going on globally that I'm telling our people as well as the rest of society. Unless you're part of the 1% elite, the, the, the multi-millionaire, billionaire class, guys, you are in danger. Serious danger. If they're talking about depopulating this planet of almost 8 billion people down to around 500 million, there are going to be many whites, Hispanics, Native Americans, you name them, Asians, who are going to die. Right now, according to TASS, the Russian news agency, that's why I brought them up, is reporting that there's war going on, or potential war between China and India. Now, you might say, well, why does that matter to us? Well, because between the two countries, there's over 2 billion people. Think about that. That's, all, that's almost a quarter, I'm sorry, one-fourth of the total population of the world right there. And they're going at each other. Right now, they're about to, they're, 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 they're shooting at one another. Last week, China shot 20 Indian soldiers. When I say India, I'm talking about, you know, India, the country of India. They shot 20 of them. And now, the, you know, uh, uh, President uh, Modi, uh, India told his soldiers, now it's time to shoot back. What happens when they start shooting back? You're talking about two countries that have nuclear weapons, I might add. What if they decide to just, you know, go for broke? They just let it all hang out and, and, and attack one or the other with a nuclear weapon. You don't think that's going to have repercussion far and wide? Of course it's going to happen. Russia and, I'm sorry, NATO, yes, and Russia are at each other. That's something that that's not being reported. China and America, again, at each other. Uh, this, this is something that I was looking at earlier. It says that um, the U.S. and China are fell into a crisis just recently. China told the U.S. that, you know, whatever they do for Hong Kong, because Hong Kong has always been, you know, one of those uh, countries in Asia that has been, you know, I'm not going to say pro-America, but America has strong influence in Hong Kong. And in times past, whatever America said, that's what happened in Hong Kong, and China had to accept it whether it was an Asian country or part of their country or not. It was almost a sovereign country inside of China that was really a property of the United States, a proxy property anyway. And Russia told the United States they're going into Hong Kong and they're going to do whatever they want to do in Hong Kong, which they have and are doing, and told the United States you can do whatever you want to do. Because whatever you do, trust me, we're ready for you. And the United States backed down, at least for the moment. They backed down. Why? Because they know something that you and I probably don't know. The resources and the power that they have to shut down the United States through what? EMP. We talked about this before. Electric, I'm sorry, electronic um, magnetic pulse. Shut down the electrical grid. If they shut down that electrical grid, they shut down this country's electrical grid, guys, it's going to be... You the chaos that would come from defunding the police, the chaos that would, would come from people out on the streets doing whatever they want to do. You're talking about wild, crazy, murderous mobs, you know, running all over the around like renegades, slaughtering, killing, raping, pilgrimaging. You, you have no, you have, you can't even imagine, my friend, what would happen in that type of environment. Yet it could happen any second. And why don't you know that? Because we're distracted with who's wearing a mask, who's not wearing a mask, who has coronavirus, who doesn't have coronavirus. 
what caused coronavirus, what did cause coronavirus, and when the next coronavirus epidemic breaks out, and ultimately whose fault it is. I'm telling you, World War III is on the verge of happening any minute now. And I can assure you, the devastation that it could bring is a hell of a lot worse than anything the coronavirus can do to anyone. I mean, we've seen those numbers by now. We've heard, you know, the director of, of, of uh, Health and Human Services, even she admitted that whatever someone dies from, if they can find any kind of uh, evidence of coronavirus, or even if they can't, they, they, they're putting those numbers to the coronavirus because they just want to be safe. They want to take precautions just in case. Just, just in case. Does that sound like an honest assessment of science to you? It doesn't to me. But that's what we're being told. Again, 2020, the truth right in front of your face and you can't see it. And we've all heard it. You know, we're all told that, you know, the coronavirus, you know what I'm saying, would kill millions of people and 250 million in America alone. Then we find out they had more people that died from the flu last year than, than, than died from the coronavirus, and, you know, at, at any given time this year. And it's funny, they're not talking about the flu anymore. I wonder how many people died from the flu this year. Or did they just take all those numbers and put that into coronavirus? Interestingly. And we are expected to accept that without challenging that, without pushback on that at all. My brothers, my sisters, we are a lot more intelligent. At least we can be a lot more intelligent than we're being right now. You know, we shouldn't be just accepting their word for anything. Right? We should not accept their word. We've been lied to and lied to by this nation almost forever. It's from the existence of this nation. Lied to about this, lied to about that. And then later years, they, and I'll give you an example. You remember when they told you that uh, cigarette smoking was not the cause of cancer? Now, if you're older than 50 years old, you probably remember some of that. Cigarette, there was no relationship between cancer and smoking cigarettes. No relationship whatsoever. You know, and it was all the major corporations, tobacco corporations and other companies who sold tobacco in, 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 in partnership with the tobacco company saying, oh, no, no, it doesn't cause cancer. It does, there's no relationship to it. And then when enough people were dying from cancer, then all of a sudden now, cigarette smoking causes cancer. It's even on the pack now. So we were lied to about that. And now we're going to trust the same government who, or the scientists or whoever's involved in saying, you know, coronavirus is, 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 is the leading cause, is going to be the leading cause of death. And, and it's, it's, it's black people and Hispanic people, you know, who, who are the central carriers of it. And don't even worry about it. If they have no symptoms, no signs whatsoever, they still have it. Man, how convenient is that to quarantine you, to quarantine you, to isolate you, to apprehend you, to eliminate you? I mean, think about it. What a convenient way to attack a, another human being. Just say it doesn't matter if they did it or not. They're guilty anyway because they look guilty. That's how that sounds to me. When you tell me that being asymptomatic means I have zero signs of a disease, but I can be a carrier of the disease anyway. So that's a license to kill. You know, North Korea. Again, this is being reported by the major news station in Russia. You know, uh, North Korea has said, you know, that if America continues to be involved in their politics, that they're going to strike America with a sensational event that's going to destroy America. Now, they said this last week. Did you hear about that on the news? Why well, you heard about, you know, which city was mandating that if you walk out the door, you better have a mask on your face or you're, or you're committing a criminal act. Did you hear that on the news? That North Korea said if the United States get any, that if the United States try anything that can interrupt their, their system of government, they're going to cause a sensational event in the United States that will destroy this country. Now, that's a bold statement for, for, for a nation to, to, to make that can't back that up. 
my friends. Again, whether it's a bluff or not, how do you know if someone is bluffing until it actually happens? It's like a big guy. You know, yesterday at work, an interesting scenario happened. I had a guy, a customer, who was probably about 6'2", maybe 250 pounds. Got in an argument with a guy who's about 5'10", 170 pounds. And they started arguing with one another. And the guy that was 6'2", that was 250 pounds pretty much said, you know, I'm going to take him outside and break him into pieces. And the guy that's 5'10", 170 said, come on, let's go outside right now because I'm going to show you something that you could have never expected that would happen to you. Let's go. And he started leading the big guy out of the building. I had to put a stop to it. Now, what was, what was, what was this 5'10", you know, 170-pound guy thinking? When he said he'd put the big guy out of his misery. I suspect that he had something, you know, up his sleeve that the big guy was not anticipating. I.e., does North Korea have something up its sleeve that the big guy the United States is not anticipating? So don't just think because somebody is bluffing that they can't back up their bluff. You may be better, you know, informed to just say, let's just kind of keep an eye on one another and hopefully we don't cross the line that, that we have to back up what we're saying. But that is what North Korea said. Okay, just again, this is FYI for your information. Because any of those events that I just mentioned, Russia, China, I mean, Russia, India, I'm sorry, China, India, Russia, U.S., U.S. and Iran, North Korea versus South Korea, North Korea versus America, any one of those things can set off World War III. And you know who's going to be the victims of it? You and I. The people on the ground. Just like in any other catastrophic war, World War I, World War II, the majority of the casualties were civilians, guys, not soldiers, were civilians. Men, women, and children who were not soldiers, had not ever picked up a gun, had never uh, uh, enacted any form of violence against their oppressor, or against, I'm sorry, not their oppressor, but against their enemy, a so-called enemy, or the enemy that the governments had identified as the enemy. Most of the casualties were people who had no say in that whatsoever. They were just the collateral damage of war justified by those governments. I'll give you an example. World War II, almost 80 million citizens around the world, citizens of the world, were killed. 80 million. That's almost half the population of the United States. And most of those were civilians, had nothing to do with picking up a gun or fighting in any of those wars. And women and children were not spared. Neither were the old and the elderly who they're saying that we can somehow affect with the coronavirus. Even though most of us don't come in contact with elderly people anymore. Most of your elderly people, because of people are so busy in these days and time, are stuck away in these little... Um, concentration camps called living assistance facilities and left in many cases now especially with the coronavirus to die alone because you can't go see them anymore so those those so they're left to die alone in these little isolated places that many of us put these people in i know you didn't have the attention for it to happen but that's the consequence of the decision that you made every decision has a consequence and if we don't think about these things before we make these decisions, then we're going to be uh, guilty by association, but maybe not guilty by intention. And I'm telling you, everyone, and this is what I'm saying to you, and, and the Most High put this on my heart to have this, to, to bring forth this message this morning. And I, it's been on my mind for the last couple of days to warn the people, to tell the people to be prepared, to be ready for what is to come, potentially. And hoping that, you know, that it means something to you. Excuse me for one second. Wow. I guess it's time for me to get out of this message. <laughs> Wrap this thing up. And I will. So instead of trying to smell the roses, just go get your son. You don't need to have a rosy outlook. When the outlook is not rosy. Last, I'm going to end with this. Preparation, guys. Matthew 24 and 20. This is in the book. 
as a warning to the people. And, it's, and it tells us, woe be those who are with child, with babies in this last days and times. And I'm telling you, if you're not prepared, that woe is going to be you. It's going to be any one of us who's not have not taken these precautions. Here's some things you need to have on your shopping list today. If you don't already, if you haven't already filled your shopping list, here's some things for you to take with you or to go and pick up. Okay, let's go. Survival straws, purify your water in case something happens to the water system. Heaters, keep you warm. Bread, frozen if you can, if you have electricity. Peanut butter, salt, preserving food, sugar, tissue, water, energy bars, soap for sanitation reasons so you can bathe. Cleaners to keep your environment sanitized. Beans. Because they're easy to prepare and a lot of protein. You don't need meat. Powdered milk for babies. Lasts a lot longer. And less expensive than similar. Flashlight. Matches. And I could go on and on and on. But those are some basic things that you need to have. Blankets. On ammunition. A community to protect each other. Building a relationship with family members, friends. To reinstate again so you can have a force to fight against any force that may come up on you in a crisis. These are steps, guys, that you should be thinking about. And again, guys, it's time now, in my personal humble opinion, maybe not so humble opinion. It's time to get away from the distraction, guys. There's a big distraction, guys. We're, over, we're too consumed and who wears a mask and who doesn't wear a mask. We're too consumed in who is the target of the coronavirus and who isn't. There are countries on this globe that had zero cases of coronavirus. Zero. And nobody's wearing a mask. And nobody wore a mask. Go figure. So was this spreaded intentionally in certain countries and not in others? Or did some countries exaggerate the numbers just to bring about the fear to be able to push forward this agenda? Go research for yourself. I did. It's a statement of fact I just made to you that some, some countries have zero cases of coronavirus. Zero. And they never wore masks. <laughs> Excuse me. But anyway, it's just on my heart to share it with you. Now it's on, up to you to take heart to what I'm saying. Okay? As Daniel told us, our ancestors, talking about the Hebrews, the wise would understand. But those with no understanding will continue to conform to something that will bring about their own demise. And that's all I'm trying to say. DFG, be talking to you soon, guys. Bye now.